So again, thank you for coming. Welcome to uh, One Temple Fitness. So today we are going to go over what is One Temple Fitness. Then we're going to have a reflection and review of self-love part one. Where do we go from there? And then talk about the commitment that um, we're going to make to ourselves. So who are we? One Temple Fitness um, is actually founded on 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. So One Temple Fitness is a complementary service striving to create a healthier you by stimulating the mind, strengthening the body, and stretching the spirit. So we encourage everybody to join the community and the movement. So now for a little reflection, if um, you are online, make sure you download the worksheet. So you can follow along. But today's reflection is from Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. And so really thinking about that as well as 1 Corinthians 15.33. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. And there's another scripture that also says, for as a man thinketh, so is he. Mm -hmm. So really just reflecting on all of that as we are talking about self-love, how do you think your beliefs affect your thoughts and your thoughts affect actually what comes out your mouth and what actually comes out your mouth becomes a behavior and your behavior becomes something that you do without even knowing because it's a habit and then your habits actually become your values. So just take some time to reflect on that quote and the, those scriptures. Um, who would like to start? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. Um, the first two things I wrote down was constant stimulation mm -hmm. and still reflection mm -hmm. and those are two areas that I feel like um, make up my existence mm -hmm. but it's not balanced mm -hmm. so I have to stimulate the constant stimulation is kind of what always happens but I don't always make time for reflection mm -hmm. and I feel like both of those are important but with the constant stimulation it has to come with mindfulness mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. is taking your attention what is what are you filling your mind with your energy with um and with that comes like intentional choices mm -hmm. um and so then with the still reflection why i feel like it's important i need to do more of it is because then that's when you realize what am i doing mm -hmm. and how am i doing it and how is that mm -hmm. impacting my emotions my, my health things like that mm -hmm. and it will allow for me to connect more with my feelings and, and my goals so mm -hmm. i feel with both the scripture and with the, the quote, mm -hmm. it's all about like mindfulness, mm -hmm. but also just recognizing what you're surrounding yourself with mm -hmm. and how that's so important to have that, that awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I I just wrote a little bit about how beliefs are subconscious. Mm -hmm. There's some things that we know we believe, but then there's some that are just from life in front of, you may not even know, or I may not even know, how do I really see myself? What do I really mm -hmm. think about myself or whatever? Cause it's so deep mm -hmm. and then everything kind of flows from mm -hmm. that. Um, and thoughts too, I think at times I can be completely unaware of what I'm thinking, because I'm either mm -hmm. listening to something or I'm just driving and thinking. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, I spent that whole car ride stressed about whatever, what might happen or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so I do definitely agree with the mindfulness mm -hmm. part. But um, yeah, I just was thinking about how what I believe shapes everything in my life mm -hmm. and some in very conscious ways like I choose certain things because of what I believe in and some 
unconscious like habits. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really hard to change habits. It's, it's possible for sure, but it's hard to change that. I think the challenge in changing the habit is first identifying it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you may say it's one thing, um, and think that that's really the issue, but it's completely something else. Mm -hmm. And whatever that something else is, you change that, and then everything else will fall into line. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's the taking time to do some introspection and be insightful yeah. into your life to say, like, what is actually the root? Mm -hmm. What is actually the habit that I need to change for everything else to change? Mm -hmm. I think in some ways, too, I'm the opposite of Erin, mm -hmm. when what she was saying about stimulation versus reflection. Mm -hmm. I studying psychology mm -hmm. and you know, done counseling and all that stuff. So I reflect a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I'm constantly thinking about what's, what's going well, what's not, right. where am I out in my life, where right. do I need to change. Right. But I think sometimes putting that into action mm -hmm. and doing it right. versus just thinking about it right. is the problem. Yes, yes. absolutely. 100%. It, you have to commit to actually wanting to do better and be better mm -hmm. um, because it's so easy to just slip back into, especially like something that's negative and not healthy. You know, mm -hmm. it's so easy to say, This is what I know. So since I know this, I might as well just go there. It's comfortable. It's yeah. comfortable, you know, or even sometimes it's like, I don't want to feel this way, but it's so hard not to will keep combating not feeling that way. And the more you combat not feeling that way, the more you combat not engaging in that behavior, the more you combat not saying those words, the easier it'll become. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's, that's definitely, that's good. That's good. Okay. All right. So last month, um, as a review of self-love, we talked about finding out what has impacted your self-love. So before we can love others, we must love to learn ourselves. When we have gone through trials and tribulations and when we are left with life scars, we can build walls around our hearts. So we don't have to feel painful emotions such as disappointment, sadness, or anger. We allow external factors to inhibit our ability to feel joy, happiness, or even wholeness. And then we talk about evaluating what fuels your self-love. And so some um, people are, some people's self-love are fueled by God's everlasting, God's love, which is everlasting, um, your own self, which is temporary. And that's more of like the self-care aspect. The last um, month we really talked about the difference between self-care and self-love and how self-care is like temporary. Like, oh, I'm going to hear it the outside, we can car wash, we can my apartment. And yeah, in the moment you may feel happiness, but joy is the self-love. And mm -hmm. that is where God steps in. And so, and then some people, um, others or things around us which are superficial feel the self-love aspect. So, um, so that was kind of um, what we talked about last month. And then the third thing is discovering God's love. So there's three, I mean, four types of God's love. Um, which can be found in the Bible. So there's storage, which is more like the friendship, um, and philo, which is more of like uh, the family, and then agape, which is God's love, and eros, which is more of the like sexual type of love. And so um, once we understand like what is agape love and how is God's love everlasting and how can we get his love? And that's kind of going to be the bridge today. Um, so where do we go from there? Now that we know... Um, where, and we did a self-assessment. So again, if you are online, make sure you download last um, month's worksheet. Self-assessment, we um, see like what exactly has impacted your self-love and then think about what um, fuels it and how to get to God's love. So um, from there, we um, want to heal. That, that should definitely be key. You want to heal. So heal through your relationship with Christ by committing to prayer, praise, devote, and connect. So um, when you pray, when you praise, and you devote, and you connect, then you will find healing in that. Okay. So first, let's talk about prayer. 
So when you pray, ask God to reveal to you who you are. As Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And let's take some time to actually reflect on that. So who are you and what keeps you from believing in your full potential? Brooklyn? So as you're reflecting on who you are and what keeps you from believing in your full potential, um, Bit Crick says, don't get it twisted. I ain't no saint. I ain't no pastor. But prayer ain't just for cloudy days and natural disasters. So in other words, be faithful in your prayer. So as you're continuing to reflect, I just want to read this. Understanding who you are and what prevents you from fully being you may be answered through daily prayer. Daily prayer increases your faith that your purpose will be revealed. So a lot of times in life, we sometimes become stressed out or even confused as to, okay, I believe in God. He made me. Now what? What, do you, what have you called me to do? What is my purpose in life? Yes, I may be happy working here and I may be happy with my family and my friends and my romantic relationships and everything, but what else? Like, you may go through life feeling unfulfilled, like you're chasing something. And so that's where daily prayer steps in, truly tapping and asking God to reveal to you who you are, what your purpose is in life. So, um, what keeps you from believing in your full potential? I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep the same order. Um, I put my own negative thoughts, fear, um, lack of faith, and then sometimes just laziness, like just complacency. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fear, I should have, I will act on my list. But I think um, sometimes just past mistakes or really like okay that it I thought this was gonna work and I put a lot of effort into that and then that didn't work and so maybe I just don't have this right and I don't know mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense but. Mm -hmm. and then just I think right now or recently limited capacity to mm -hmm. really do a lot of extra stuff mm -hmm. just feeling like I only have so much energy, so much time. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't feel like maybe the way I felt when I was a little bit younger. Obviously, I was so young, but where I was just like, I could do this, everything. I, yeah, I've grown up very fast in it. I get it. I get it. So, um, anybody online want to share? Okay. Um, if so, just chime in. 
I would say um, when I think about what keeps me from believing in my full potential, this one isn't, um, I kind of shared this last month. It's, for me, it's not about believing in my full potential for success in life. Um, it's more about, um, which we're going to get to later about trust, um, in terms of like relationship, because I know that I'm going to be successful. I know that I'm going to travel the world and impact lives. I know right now we may start off with two, three, four, five, and it's going to be turning to hundreds. I just see it. I see God just really using me in a major way. Not really worried about that. So I know in my potential in that, but it's the other thing. So we'll get to that. That's more of the trust side of things, you know? Okay. Praise. So thank God for revealing your story and giving you a voice to share your story. Psalm 138, 23 through 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything you find in me that makes you sad and lead me along the path of everlasting life. And Psalm 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so what these two scriptures are saying is that thank God, praise God for knowing that if you're faithful to him, it will be revealed, your, your story, your, your voice, and, and also thanking God for having the courage to tell your story. Because a lot of times in our story, it's not always pretty. And so there is um, shame in there. There's guilt in our story. There's um, things that we're actually really, really proud of. But a lot of people always say, um, and I'm going to use the example, Mary, Mary, the song that says, um, you may look at what I have, but you don't know how I got there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's like, you know, I pray, I got on my knees, I prayed. And so it's like a lot of people may say, I see where you are, but they don't necessarily know the journey. And sometimes it's good to tell the journey because um, it's actually liberating for other people. Um, even if it, it starts to be shameful for you, it's liberating for other people. Um, but you also have to be careful you tell a journey too because some people will throw it back in your face. Some people will say, yes, you can trust me with that, but then, um, you know, rub it in your face and make you feel bad and shameful about it. And obviously those people don't care about you in the first place, but it will still, um, it will hurt, you know? And so just... Praise God for that. So let's take some time to sit and reflect on what is your story? What parts do you appreciate? What parts do you hide?
So um, I want you to continue to reflect on what is your story? What parts do you appreciate and what parts do you hide? And as you reflect, I'm going to share. One thing I want to highlight, as it says on the slide, thanking God for your story, inclusive of victory, defeat, happiness, and shame through daily praise produces hope for the future. So a lot of times in life, as I stated before, we may not want to share our story because of the defeat of the shame. Um, however, again, it produces sometimes hope, not even for yourself, it may not even be for you, but for people around you. So one of my many stories, <laughs> um, grad school. So um, I'm towards the end of it, but I failed comps the first time. And comps is like the comprehensive exam that you have to pass in order to go to internship. An internship is similar to residency. Um, for med school. So, um, so I failed the first time, but it was a retake with the same case. And they said it wasn't CBT enough. So it wasn't a theoretical orientation enough because I, fo I focus a lot on the culture. And then in, when, I, when I retook it, I, I received a remediation. So, you know, I'm like, first, you want me to retake it with the same case. Remediation means I had to rewrite one aspect. Mm -hmm. So the new examiners said it wasn't cultural enough. It was too much of a theoretical orientation. So I'm like, look, okay, God, you, you are really on one right now because I can't seem to please anybody. But it wasn't about them. And so I rewrote the paper, and it was excellent because I was able to put the culture that I had in first paper, the CBT I had in second paper, and make it a really great paper. Mm -hmm. So by the time I interviewed for internship, which was only about eight weeks later, I was on it. So although it seemed like I was defeated, some of my you know cohort were probably talking about me like, oh, you know, we thought she was smart, we thought this, that, and the third, but obviously, you know, I was having struggles. And I even told Aaron um, this today, I'm not one of the highest paid internships. So it's one of those things where your defeats may not really be defeated, it's only temporary because there's a victory at the end. Mm -hmm. And it's preparation for your victory, it's preparation mm -hmm. for your story. Because now I can not only do a better job at you know, conceptualizing case from different frameworks, but I also know that God has me. You know, because it's like he put me into this program, so trust him in the process. And at first, like, I didn't want to tell the third years who were underneath me applying for internship and preparing for comps that. First, I was like, that's kind of shameful. But then it's like, you know what, who cares what they think? Because they actually want to be at my internship site. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's just one of those things where it's, um, we can't be so hard on ourselves. Um, when we tell our story, because you never know how it can liberate somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I want you also to think about it. Think about who you are. What is your story? What parts do you appreciate? What parts do you hide? Who wants to share? Give me some time to write. Go. go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I think without sharing a specific story, I would really have to think about it. I'm sure I can find one. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of parts that I had, I think when you're in the middle of a story, like not now you're on the other side mm -hmm. and you made it to, through the two mm -hmm. tests mm -hmm. and now you're at the internship. Mm -hmm. But when you're at the point where you just also heard that you failed this mm -hmm. test, like when the, it's kind of the middle of the story. Yes. I think those are the times where I'm less open mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm when it's not done yet. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a nice, put into a nice little box. Yet. Right, right. Yeah. And that's why this part is so important, the praise part, mm -hmm. because although I didn't know the outcome, I was, I was praising God that whatever mm -hmm. it was, it was going to be positive. Right. Whether it was, I just made it to internship, you know what I mean? And so I, I, and I think that's what God is trying to, to say to us. In the midst of your storm, 
praising in advance mm -hmm. for knowing that there is hope for your future, for knowing that there's victory in your future, for knowing that things will be taken care of. Yes. And, and that is the main part of this piece. And I'm so glad you said that because it's like, no, we don't want to tell people what's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't want to be like, oh, I'm struggling right now. But when you have that hope for the future, that builds your self-love, that builds your self-confidence because it comes from God and it brings you closer to God because you're like, I'm hopeful and I know that you're going to work it out. It may not be how I want it to be. Yes. And that's the hard part. That's the <laughs> letting go. Yes. I think I mean, that's almost that exact place of being in the middle of where I've done everything I can in the situation completely. Like mm -hmm. I've done every single thing I can and it's just like, Mm -hmm. I have, all I can do now is like wait and praise. I've passed the action, mm -hmm. like doing all the stuff. There's nothing else for yeah. me to do. Just be still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Everything that you said, I will double click. <laughs> um, story one was hard for me to write because I feel like I'm still writing it. Mm -hmm. You know? So for me, I just kind of wrote the things that I want my story to include. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't really tell you concrete details like mm -hmm. at first i wanted to go like the creative writing style where it's like i'm a woman who's gone through you know <laughs> that right, right. but then i was like i'm just seeking purpose happiness joy and mm -hmm. that's what i'm mm -hmm. going to discover you know right right and then for the parts that i appreciate it's like you know, the I've I've overcome right or those moments where i thought i couldn't be because i feel like those parts are the ones that i feel like most connected um, right. with my story and then yeah. the parts that I have right. tend to be when I'm struggling. Yes. Um, where I feel maybe some or feeling like I don't want to be burdensome to someone else. So I, I won't share that part because then that person Sometimes as a loose like as a that I can do it on my own. Yeah. You always kind of play that role. Like, right. I got my stuff together. As a I don't know, then I don't have my stuff together, then I kind of just suffer silently. Yeah. Yeah. So right. just um, so, realizing that my story is my own story. And then as a loose the Right. And that's the key piece. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know we have some people online. Um, so if you would like to share, please definitely share. We hear you. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Yes. All right. My name is Obi. And just to kind of sh share a little bit about my story, um, I think uh, one of the biggest things is getting in my own way. Sometimes we can rely on our own power to get ourselves through tough situations. And sometimes we forget that God gives us the power and energy to, to accomplish these things. And kind of in my life, I felt the different ups and downs with uh, the struggle of letting go and then being strong headed at the same time. And so I feel like uh, just really understanding um, and appreciating both ups and downs and realizing when you're trying to be in control versus when you're letting go of that control and seeing how that affects your life. And I feel like most often than not, when I actually let go, things usually run a little bit smoother. Um, I'm not saying not to be assertive. So there's a difference between being assertive and letting, letting go completely. Um, so I feel like just as a, the other person there said, parts that we hide, sometimes we never necessarily are quick to share our failures, whether it be on social media or with our family or friends. It just depends on if, you know, you have someone to confide in uh, without judgment. So generally we were more quick to share our successes. And I feel like maybe that's a part of the reason why a lot of people aren't able to deal with failure because they're not regularly seeing how other people handle it. So that's about it. Thank you. And you definitely hit on a key part, having someone to share your successes and failures with without judgment. So, yes. so true. And I think too, when I think of praise, 
it's like gratitude. Mm-hmm. So like finding those things to be grateful for, because there's always something to be grateful for, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's waking up the next day or having shelter or having food, right. um, the people that we have in our lives. So always coming from that place of gratitude can also help shift like mindset and like perspective. Too. Yes. It's so vital. So vital. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to go on to devote. So devote, learn God's word to cleanse yourself of negativity by washing it with the word of God. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So uh, when we think of devote, some of the questions I want you to reflect on, what part of your life needs some cleansing? And it's good to reflect on what part of your life needs some cleansing because devoting your time to studying God's word develops trust in his promises, which is found in scripture. So, in order to truly do a self inventory about what needs to be changed in your life, um, physically, mentally, spiritually, um, you have to understand whatever you put in your mind will come out flowing through your mouth. Whatever you put in your spirit will come out flowing through your mouth and your actions. So by learning God's word, it can cleanse you of the negativity, it can cleanse you of the junk, essentially, that's been um, stored inside of your body. So I want you to take some time and at the bottom of your worksheet, reflect on what part of your life needs some cleansing. Okay, so who would like to start? Would anyone online like to start? Anybody here? What part of your life needs some cleansing? Okay, well, I will start then. (laughs) My mouth. So um, it's so interesting because I was reflecting on this and... Um, again, as, um, I was saying earlier that you have to be careful what you put inside because whatever you put inside will come out. And I know that God has given me, um, a sharp tongue to uplift people and empower people. And in the same sense, I can also touch you down. And what I, what was pointed out this week from my partner is that, um, you've been using a lot of bad words. <laughs> and it's like, Yes, I could easily say, well, my work is hard. Um, and, but at the same time, it's being mindful of 
especially when you're very spiritual, um, good spirits and evil spirits will find you. And so you have to guard yourself. You have to guard your heart, just like the scripture says, above all else, guard your heart from everything you do flows from it. So being intentional about like, what are you saying? When you say it, what are you listening to? Who are you around and how is it coming out? You know? So um, I would definitely say um, because he has given me a gift to bless people. I don't want the cursing to hinder the blessing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, so I would say that. I put um, negative self-talk. So I need to cleanse that of myself. And I, I feel like that's a process. Mm. I, I'm, I catch it so quickly now where I'm like, Aaron, you need to stop saying that. Like, so I feel like I'm definitely in a way better spot than that. Um, negative attitudes and environments. So one of my coworkers at work, she has a citation sheet where she gives citations to people in the office. And it's like has things on there where it's like excessive talking, gossiping, like da da da, -da. And she'll literally check off what box it is and like hand it to the person. And that's like obviously like a funny way of doing it, but it's just her way of kind of saying like, this is my space. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want certain things in my space. Mm -hmm. So definitely owning that. Mm -hmm. um, I put empty routine. Like, I feel there's things that feed us and, like, promote us and empower us and uplift us, and there's just things that just kind of leave us where we're at. Mm -hmm. And so, like, just recognizing, is this really something that's uplifting me, like, pushing me forward, or is this just kind of just, like, an empty routine that's safe and, like, comfortable? Mm -hmm. um, and then, obviously, like, past traumas, like, really forgiving people who I need to forgive or forgiving myself for certain things that I feel like maybe could have uh, gone a lot better, so... Those are some things. Mm -hmm. cleansing. All right. Would anybody else like to share? I'll share. Okay. Um, well, I put one, which is two words, because it's like the biggest one. The first thing that came to mind was um, fear and anxiety. And I have um, kind of probably an unhealthy level of mm -hmm. both. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of hinders me from doing a lot of things mm -hmm. and especially just 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 living in constant fear of what could happen or what may happen or constantly like because I actually like have anxieties so like wake up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. but like it's mm -hmm. it's really bad and so mm -hmm. that's I think that's the, the biggest cause in any step. Thank you for being transparent. Absolutely. Anybody else? Uh, I guess I would say for myself it would be the cleansing of the mind. Um, more so, we come in contact with so much during the day as far as like uh, information, what we're processing, what we're reading, what we're watching, what we decide to watch, what we decide to read, and just really taking the time to really understand the effects it has on us. So I, I feel like maybe I need to sit back and review some of the things that I come in contact with and cut certain things out that um, I'm not really of God. Because I've kind of been teetering back and forth between different you know, ideas and what God wants for me. And I wasn't even sure if I was going to come tonight because I was kind of exhausted and tired from a long day. And then uh, as I'm driving back, I see on the overpress, as I'm driving on the freeway, this man is kind of sitting in a lounge chair with a, a sign plastered across like the fence and it simply stated Jesus or hell and I'm like maybe you guys saying something to me I don't know so sometimes we're so wish-washy to a side we decide to you know be on and we're not perfect human beings but I was like it couldn't be but any plain or more simple than that like, whose side are you on that's real. Very, very true. Very true. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? I can share a little bit. I don't think I have anything new to add, but I put mind and heart. And I think heart, heart, I think when I think of that, it's like for me where my emotions are, the things that I love, but also sometimes anxiety mm -hmm. um, and control. Mm -hmm. I, I think. 
I have been cleansing myself of the need to be in control because I've just realized I'm not. So even in my own life, there's just some things that I cannot be in control of. And that's just life. Um, but I think to do that, I'm growing deeper and trusting God to take care of me. But like, not just like, okay, I trust God, but I'm really worried. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> right, for real. But like getting more rooted through going through situations where I'm not in control and I just have to let Trust. go. Right. Um, right. Yeah, that's hard. In mine, I think worrying is mm-hmm. it's connected to fear, but just think feeling like if I just think about the situation mm-hmm. over and over, that's gonna make it better, or I'm gonna figure it out, and then I don't figure it out <laughs> because it just, it just makes me tired. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are the things that mm-hmm. I've been working on. Thank you for sharing and definitely hit some valid points. And, and all of you did, um, particularly when we talk about mind, body, spirit. Mm-hmm. If you worry a lot, it physically tires you out. It induces and produces cortisol, which is then biologically, you know, you gain fat from that. You don't sleep as well. It's just bad, you know? And so on multiple levels and then spiritually you're not growing you're actually stopping your growth because it's like god is saying i'm the one that's in control you know and so it's on so many levels and so that's that's definitely powerful to um, recognize that um, when you fully trust god then things will work out yeah and you can go to sleep and sleep through the night you know and um, and not have to worry about things you can't control or even ruminate over past situations that are in behind you and you can't go back and undo them. It's like, God, I just trust you that you'll fix it. And the more I pray to you, the more you'll reveal to me what to do. And then I'm going to give you praise because I'm hopeful that it's going to work out. Mm-hmm. See, just it all kind of comes together. And last but not least is connect. Build a relationship with Christ to receive his agape love. Agape love through investing time in your relationship with him. So whoever does not love does not know God. Why? Because God is love. And as our picture says, God is calling you to a passionate love relationship with himself because the answer to religious complacency isn't working harder at a list of do's and don'ts. It's falling in love with God. And so um, I want you to take some time and to reflect on what does freedom mean to you? Do you feel free or is something or someone stifling your freedom? Is forgiveness an easy or difficult process for you? How do you invest in your love relationship with Christ? How do you invest in your love relationship with yourself?
as you continue to write and reflect, I just want to read, loving Christ will help you access freedom through forgiveness of self and others. Christ's love will also give you the ultimate connection with him to understand real love. Okay, so we're going to start to go over the questions. Does anybody online want to kick us off? Okay, we'll come back. Anybody who wants to kick us off? There are a lot of really good questions. Uh, let me see which one I want to. For the do you feel free or something or someone stifling your freedom, I put material situations, which attaches to like the worry aspect that you were talking about, John. So like mm -hmm. I worry about like bills being paid, I worry about the loans I'm gonna have, and a lot of those worrying, um, I think it puts me in this box of like, oh I can't have that opportunity or I can't do that because I need to save money or I need to do this. And so it just kind of puts me in this box. But at the same time, I wrote lack of planning and ownership. There's certain things mm -hmm. that I'm doing to myself um, that's stifling my freedom mm -hmm. because I'm not planning or I'm just not taking ownership of the situation. Mm -hmm. So um, both of those things. Awesome. Anybody else want to share? Mine is pretty similar. Mm -hmm. I'm living um, freedom to me. It's living without barriers and mental barriers of lots of it's pretty much very similar mm -hmm. and um we're also doing the second one as well uh -huh. oh, and, and um do you feel like you feel free or something that's shifting you um i feel as though i am I'm close, um, but I feel as though my constant concern for how others view me and feel about me is something that stifles my heart mm -hmm. yes 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 and that is very on point to what we're talking about tonight in regards to self-love. When we pour so much into other people's view instead of Christ's view, that's when we get the worries and the fears and even sometimes depression and the guilt and the shame as if we're not living up to other people's standard when Christ only just wants us to be a good person. And knowing that when we develop a close relationship with him, he's going to give us everything that we need. And we don't have to sacrifice our morals and our values to get it, you know? Because when we think of man's uh, point of view and man's opinion of us, it actually taints the purity that God is trying to pour into us. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, did you want to continue? Oh, we'll continue? Okay. <laughs> so forgiveness. Um, Forgiveness isn't easy, but um, for me, it's it's not very difficult either. Mm -hmm. um, I I find that funny that I feel more free when mm -hmm. I, I can forgive. So mm -hmm. I find that life in general is easier to live with forgiveness. So that's something that mm -hmm. um, that I don't struggle with too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's real. And um, does anybody want to? Answer the last one. How do you invest in your love relationship with Christ and with yourself? Anybody online ready to share? Well, I didn't want to be the only one sharing, but... Uh, <laughs> I'll add after you. Gotcha. Uh, so how do I invest in my love relationship with Christ and with myself? Mm -hmm. Um... 
It's an interesting question. I, I guess uh, the easiest way for me to answer that would be to say that through constant communication, so through prayer, so trying to invest in a relationship by keeping that open line of communication, you know, regardless of, you know, ups and downs of life, at least he knows what my heart is. And then as far as with myself, that same, my love relationship with myself. Mm -hmm. Is that the question? Mm -hmm. um, trying to reflect upon, you know, different things or different events in my life and really taking the time to process it in a sense of, like, is this something that I want? Is this me? Is this who I am? Is this what I want to be representative of me? Or if this is what God wants of me? So just really taking the time to really understand and get a feel for my moral compass and where I hope, what direction I'm going. So that's it. What about any of the other questions? Do you have any? Uh, what does freedom mean to me? That's a complicated question. My first thing would be, what type of freedom are you talking about? Are we talking about freedom in the sense of being able to do whatever you want to do here on earth? Or are we talking about freedom as far as spiritual freedom, feeling that peace and that one with God? So depends on which freedom you're talking about. But since we're here in the spiritual setting, um, I would say that freedom to me is feeling in line with God's commandments and feeling um, truly understanding His grace and will for us and being on one accord in the sense that you, you have established that relationship with God. Um, what do I feel is something or someone? Cycling my freedom. Um, I wouldn't say it's cycling my spiritual freedom so much, other than myself, because at the end of the day, we're all responsible for our own actions, especially as adults. Um, as far as my my physical freedom here on earth, uh, sometimes you know you feel a slave to debt, like uh, someone's mentioning earlier, like student loans or credit or whatever it might be, and sometimes that changes our thinking and stifles our spiritual growth because we kind of put ourselves in a box like i can't do this i can't do that and we let that bring us down but we forget that god also said give to caesar what is caesar's and then give to god what is god mm -hmm. and just remind yourself of that um is forgiveness an easy or difficult process for me i would say initially as as a child i think we all are easy to forgive at least most of us. And as we grow older, we, we start to hold on to old memories and old hurts and pains. And just relearning how to be childlike. Like, uh, and that's why I think Jesus and God in general love for us little children because they're so reflective of his love. And for us to really kind of get back to that base. I think I answered all the questions, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I just wanted to touch on um, the separation between spiritual freedom and physical freedom and that I would say that they're not separate because when you're spiritually free, you will be physically free. However, you could be physically free and not spiritually free. It's, and that's why it's so important to be spiritually free because when you're spiritually free, everything else will fall into place. And that's what God is saying when it comes to loving ourselves, that we need to connect with him because he's the ultimate lover. He's the ultimate provider. He's the ultimate of way maker. And so by building a close relationship with him, you will find freedom in whatever you need liberation from. Whether it's from something that somebody said to you 10, 15 years ago, whether it's something that somebody did to you 10, 15 years ago, or even 10, 15 minutes ago. It's like when you tap into, Lord, I really need to be liberated from this because it's stifling who you've called me to be and who you designed me to be and the purpose you have for me. Then and only then will everything else free up in your life. Um, 
So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. Um, anybody else want to share? I think, too, one of the differences, kind of what he was talking about with the world, when you think of being free, you think of having nothing that, like, you have to do. Like, I think, like, just, you know, all the money I need, no, in the world's version, like, no responsibility. You don't have to do anything. Nobody tells you what to do. Right, right. But then when you think in reality of people who, even in that definition, got to that point, they worked so hard <laughs> to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And like, I know even spiritually, it just requires so much discipline. Yeah. You don't think of discipline as like leading to freedom. Right. <laughs> it seems like the opposite. But I think that um, one thing that discipline for me is something that's probably stifling mm -hmm. um, me from being free of certain things, even maybe like anxiety or something. I know, like I studied it. Mm -hmm. I know that like if you exercise every day vigorously, that will help mm -hmm. you. You know what? But I don't want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's, yeah, embracing the hard road to getting free of yeah. things, or even being free of certain relationships that are comfortable, not even talking romantic, just mm -hmm. friendships mm -hmm. that are like, I know, I'm not growing, like, they're, you know, we've grown apart, but it's comfortable, mm -hmm. and I don't want to go through the pain of just kind of cutting that off, mm -hmm. you know, um, or things like that, that will lead to freedom, but like not being ready or wanting to take the painful step. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. There's a quote that I have like in my apartment and it says, um, well actually it's defining entrepreneurship, but essentially that it says entrepreneurship is living um, a portion of your life like no one else will so that you can live the rest of your life like no one else can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That just kept making Mm -hmm. And I think too, like, like uh, I've never been good with money, <laughs> but I know that God is disciplining me now, so when I get access to it, I can actually manage it. Right. So it's kind of like it does. Freedom does require discipline because mm -hmm. you can't really, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so like, you may not be able to handle it, you might, or you lose it. You'll have it, and you can't hold on to it, and it's gone. Right. You know? So. Right. That was like a huge epiphany where it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes when you're in the struggle and you're like, it's hard being disciplined or having mm -hmm. those habits or those routines and rituals, but mm -hmm. you have to believe that it is strengthening you for that future, you know, like mm -hmm. so you can sustain it, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Feel like, like when they say all the, you know, famous people that get famous and then they fall like doing like drugs and all the stuff, all these different bankruptcies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, and that's too, I think, where the spiritual aspect comes in, and, and like you said, I love it, you don't think about discipline leading to freedom, but it does, and it's so true, because when you're spiritually disciplined, then God will prepare you for that mate that you want, and then you'll know how to be a good wife or how to be a good husband. When you are spiritually disciplined, God will prepare you for that Fortune 500 company that you want to be a CEO of because then you know what morals and values are and how to actually treat people and see people as people. When you are disciplined spiritually, then you know to say, I don't have to take the lower road. Like, I want that position, but I'm not going to sleep with that person or flirt with that person just because this is where I want to be. You know what I mean? So it's just so much or I know that when I'm spiritually disciplined being stubborn and being angry is so much easier and cursing you out oh that's just like because I said what I had to say and I'm done instead of being nice being loving being kind and actually when you look at me you see Christ in my heart even though I really want to do something else but it's like I'm really because when I'm spiritually disciplined God is like you know what now I can trust you now you're prepared now you're ready to move forward because you know that I am love. Will we make mistakes? Yes. Will we fail? Yes. But when we consciously do it, that means we're not consciously being disciplined to make sure that we're free. Okay? Which is a great segue to commitment. So which area of healing do you struggle in and why? Is it prayer, 
which leads to faith, which leads to actually believing in yourself? Is it praise, which leads to building hope and sharing your story? Is it devotion, which actually leads to trusting God and cleansing yourself of negativity with the word of God? Or is it connection, which actually builds a solid love relationship with God? Because remember, we want God to be our husband, not our sugar daddy. So we need to actually spend time with God. Um, and the love actually lends to forgiveness. And forgiveness is freedom. And investing your time for real love. So uh, as we come to a close, I want you to identify one struggle and one thing you want to commit to in order to grow out of the name struggle. So the name struggle, whatever struggle you name. So the name struggle might, let's say, be number three. You know that you want to spend more time with God reading his word. So identify one struggle and one thing you want to commit today in order to grow out of that struggle. I feel like this is a cycle. Like uh -huh. you can be in different parts in this process, in different parts of um, of your life. And I feel like I went through a period where I was cleansing myself mm -hmm. and cleansing my environment. But I feel like I'm back at one where mm -hmm. it's like believing in myself and sharing my story. So one thing that I want to commit to is um, journaling. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done that in a very, 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 very long time. Mm -hmm. And I think that will allow for me to just process my feelings, process um, my day, and also allow to, I feel like there's power in writing things down mm -hmm. on paper. So just uh, writing down my goals, my dreams, my aspirations on paper, I think will help be a constant reminder. Mm -hmm. And then um, just constantly making sure that I'm on top of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and then to service. I feel like um, I used to love service. College was all about service. Mm -hmm. And um, Anytime that I see someone doing a service, I always want to go, but it's not always constant. So just what can I manage within my schedule that is a reflection of service, I think would be good for me. Who's speaking? <laughs> that was Aaron. I can't see Aaron. Oh. Hi. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that was me speaking. Ah. <laughs> So, um, would you like to share? Sure. Okay. Um, the one I decided to talk about was number three. Okay. The boat. Um, mm -hmm. And um, my commitment will be to, I want to start resubscribing to the rest of the day <laughs> that I used to have on my Bible app. And, um, and it just, you know, because it's, it's easy to mm -hmm. read, you know, and, it's, and it pops up there every day. And then at least it'll be that, you know, not to remind you to get into the flow, but just getting back into work. Yes, yes. And to connect with you on that, I also said to vote. Um, in the beginning of my uh, internship, I would get up like 15, 20 minutes before, and I would have like a 5, 10 minute devotional, like a 5, 10 minute exercise routine really believing in mind, body, spirit. And I tell you, like, those are the best days. And yes, it's like, okay, who wants to get up at 4.15 in the morning? Nobody. <laughs> but did that set me, like, did that ground me? Absolutely. And even during the Lenten season when we had the prayer calls, um, I did have to make a sacrifice to get there to, to work a little bit earlier so I could do the prayer calls. But every Wednesday was just fabulous. It was such a great Wednesday. So um, being committed to my morning devotionals. And then um, in life, when we set goals and when we um, want to grow, making sure that they're short-term baby goals, because if we make it such a big goal, then it's like, how can I tackle that? So saying this is everything I want to do, but the first step to get there is doing this because I also want to start journaling, but I know that if I add that, I'm going to be so overwhelmed. I'm not going to want to do anything. So that's a really good like Bible app. It comes to my phone. Boom. So also for people online is thinking like, what goal do I have? Okay. Now what baby goal can I actually tackle to say, yes, I can make this a realistic goal. 
So we just want to thank everybody for coming and in participating in our self-love part two temple talk. Please go to our website, www.the7fire8.com to subscribe to our um, blogs. We do weekly devotionals as well as empowerment blog. And if you haven't got your One Temple Fitness workout tower, please purchase that as well. And most importantly, um, join the community and the movement. It's complimentary, which means it's free. And <laughs> that's because we really believe in stimulating the mind through daily meditative thoughts um, and monthly temple talks, as we did tonight. Strengthen the body, uh, free monthly group workouts, and we also do weekly encouragement to engage in personal uh, daily exercise and healthy eating and stretch the spirit through the weekly devotionals and the seasonal prayer calls. So we thank you so much for joining us and we really hope that you learn something and gain something and that you have a deeper sense of yourself and self-love through the relationship that you're going to continue to build with Christ Jesus. Amen. All right.